Hey guys and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to look at the pros and cons between the Raspberry Pi 3 and Pine A64. The Raspberry Pi 3 is the successor to the well-known Raspberry Pi 2, and this is the first Raspberry Pi to have a 64-bit processor. It starts at $35 and has many features. On the other hand, we have the new computer called the Pine A64. It's not as well known as the Raspberry Pi, but it's just as good. It also has a 64-bit processor, but unlike the Raspberry Pi's processor, which is built by Broadcom and is unique to the Raspberry Pi, the Pine A64 uses a chipset from the all-winner China company called the A64 chipset. This also is a quad-core 64-bit processor. Each board has its own pros and cons, and let's look over them in this video. Okay, so uh, this is the Pine A64. So this is designed in Silicon Valley, California and manufactured in Silicon Delta, China. So what's notable about this computer is that it was started by the Pine64 Inc. And on Kickstarter, it raised a stunning $1.7 million with almost 37,000 backers. So that's pretty good for a board like this. Um, they reached their targets on time and uh, I was very happy to have kickstarted this and gotten this board. As you can see, it's a lot bigger in size than a Raspberry Pi. And uh, let's take a closer look at the silicon that powers this. Yep, so uh, there's actually three variations of the Pine A64. So you have the base A64, and then there's two versions of the A64 Plus. So with the base model, you only get 512 megabits of RAM and uh, um, 100 megabit Ethernet port, and you don't have any display or camera uh, connectors. You'd need to solder them on yourself but you get it at a relatively competitive price of $15. If you're willing to pay $4 more on top of the uh, $15 price, you're getting gigabit ethernet, a gig of RAM, and also the display and camera connector. If you're willing to pay a solid $14 more and $10 more than the one gig model, you get two gigs of RAM. In my opinion, the uh, A64 Plus with one GB RAM is the most optimum setup for the Pine A64 and the one I would buy. So now let's take a closer look at the board. Okay, so in the center of the board, you can see the all winner A64 system on chip. On the left side, there are the Samsung RAM modules. In my case, I have the 512 megabit model. So there's 512 megabytes of RAM. On the right side, you can see the AXP803 power management chip. On the top, you have the Pi 2 bus, so the whole GPIO is the same as uh, every Pi with 40 pins. You have your TP connector, which isn't soldered on, your CSI connector, which is also not soldered on. But on the right side, you have your battery and real-time clock connector. On the bottom, there's the display connector, not soldered on as well, your Euler bus, EXP bus, and micro SD card slot. On the left side, there's the power jack, the Ethernet port, and the HDMI uh, port. And on the right side, you have your USB ports and the Wi-Fi adapter port, and as well as your headphone and mic combo jack. Okay, so uh, let's take a closer look at the Raspberry Pi. This is the Raspberry Pi 3, the third iteration of the Raspberry Pi from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. This is designed in the UK and mostly manufactured in China, I believe. So um, most of you already know the history behind the Raspberry Pi and where it came from. It has had siblings, the Raspberry Pi 1 and the Raspberry Pi 2, and those have sold millions in units. So this is one of the most popular single board computers. And uh, yeah, let's take a closer look at the silicon that powers this as well. Okay, so in the center of the board, you can see the Broadcom BCM2387 chip. That's the system on chip that powers the whole Raspberry Pi. It's a 64-bit chip, just like the Pine 64. On the top, you have the 40-pin GPIO, which the Raspberry Pi is famous for. On the bottom, you have your power in, your HDMI port, your camera connector, and your uh, composite video and audio out. On the right side of the board, you have your four USB ports, and on the bottom, you have a 100 megabit Ethernet port. To the left side of the USB ports, you can see the SMSC chip. That is the USB controller that powers the Ethernet ports and as well as the four USB ports. And on the far uh, left side of the board, you have your display connector, and right above the display connector, the little plastic piece where it says made in the UK right next to it, that is the Wi Fi antenna. Okay, so let's go over some uh, technical specifications of both boards. 
Some key notes to detail are the uh, RAM, the Raspberry Pi 3 comes standard with 1 gig of RAM, while the Pi A64, depending on what model you select, the top tier board, which I've been comparing it with, has 2 gigabytes of RAM, but the lower end models share the same specs except the RAM, so you could get the 1 gig or 512 megabyte. Another uh, key note is the Pine A64 can do 4K Ultra HD video while the Raspberry Pi 3 is capped at 1080p. Connectivity, uh, Raspberry Pi has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and Ethernet while Pine A64 has Ethernet. Uh, storage, you can do up to 64 gigs on the Raspberry Pi while the Pine A64 can go up to 256 gigs. You have four USB ports on the Raspberry Pi 3 versus the two on the Pine A64. 40 GPIO on the Raspberry Pi 3 versus the 84 GPIO on the Pine A64. You have gigabit Ethernet on the Pine A64 while the Raspberry Pi 3 only has 100 megs. There's a charging circuit and the board is $29. So if you get a Raspberry Pi, you won't have a charging circuit and you're also paying 35 bucks. But if you do want the integrated uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on the Pine A64, it is another $11 adapter aside from the $29 cost of the top tier board. Okay, so now let's take a look at the benchmarks of both boards. Okay, so here are the benchmarks for both boards. Uh, I ran Sysbench and multiple configurations. I ran Sysbench at 5000 and Sysbench at 20000. And I used single core, dual core, and quad core performance numbers. The Raspberry Pi 3 was running Raspbian Lite, which is a 32-bit operating system. There is no 64-bit operating system for the Raspberry Pi available yet. And the Pine A64 was running Debian Base 64 bit, uh, built by the user Longsleeve. It's very popular for the 512 megabit board, so I thought it would be very stock, so we would get pretty similar numbers on both sides of the table. So, Sysbench at 5000 on single core, uh, Raspberry Pi 3 took almost 70 seconds, but the Pine A64 did it in 5.3 seconds, which is quite a speed difference compared to the Raspberry Pi 3. If the Raspberry Pi Foundation launches maybe a 64-bit operating system, we're going to see better numbers. But you guys can look at the results here. Now let's take a look at the Raspberry Pi forums. To reach the Raspberry Pi forum, you go to www.raspberrypi.org forums. So as you can see, the forums are actually quite big and there's a lot of topics you can talk on. The Raspberry Pi forum was initially introduced with the Raspberry Pi about five years ago. The forums have gone through multiple iterations and this is the newest and most appealing iteration in my opinion. So as you can see, there's quite a few topics you can talk in. There are a, vi a wide range of topics you can discuss with other people, and you can see most of the categories that you would want to talk to already have a lot of topics and posts. Like here you can see projects, automation and robotics, what I usually focus with my Raspberry Pi. They have over 35,000 posts with 5,000 topics. And then some topics you might like say, such as uh, the issues and troubleshooting. It's one of the first topics there you can see. It has 124,000 posts with 21,000 topics. Chances are if you've had an issue with your Raspberry Pi, most probably someone's mentioned it in the forums and there's a solution. So yeah, if you ever have any issues with the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi forum's awesome. If you post something, usually you get a reply, quite a few replies actually in a day or two. Uh, I've used it before, I quite like it. And so, uh, yeah, to conclude, I, I recommend the Raspberry Pi forums and suggest everyone to use them when they can. Okay, so now let's take a look at the Pine64 forums. Okay, so now we're taking a look at the official Pine64 form. To reach this form, go to forum.pine64.org. So as you can see, the form uh, look, is, looks like a traditional form. It's not unique and uh, pretty attractive like the Raspberry Pi form, but it's uh, it gets the job done. You can see it's, it's clean. It gets you to what you need. If you go into a section, there's the threads right there. Yeah, so it's it does what a form needs to do. So in the number of posts, actually, there's a statistics page here. You can see there's the total number of 14,000 posts in 1,500 threads. So you can probably figure out that this isn't as big as the Raspberry Pi forms, but the Pine64 is a relatively new board compared to the Raspberry Pi. So yeah, this form is growing and I think uh, by the end, this by the time as time goes on, I think this form will be pretty big as well. 
Another unique thing the Pine64 has is an official wiki provided by the Pine64 uh, company. So here we're at the Pine uh, A64 uh, wiki page. So to reach the wiki, you can just go to wiki.pine64.org and it'll route you to their main page. So you can see there's a freshman page, there's a quick start and how to set up. There's some sample images they have if you want you can use. There's some more uh, SOC specification, system memory, all the stuff like if you needed a go-to place you could come here and figure out what's going on. So you can see there's a lot of information you can get like the drivers and the kernel and stuff like that. And uh, I think since the Pine64 is so new, other people have taken the advantage to create other websites. And uh, I found a really good website with uh, good downloads for operating systems that that are more than just what are offered here. So uh, the website is www.pine64.pro. So on this website, uh, this is the actual front page. Um, I don't know what this blank space is for, but um, you can see there's a community, there's a lot of questions if you want to get started. There's a quick start Linux guide, which I don't see anything with. But um, what I found really useful is the resources. And if you click on resources and go to downloads, there's a lot of useful downloads. There's 7-zip, there's the all-winner introduction, there's a lot of drivers. And then what's notable is there's the Android uh, images you can get, Remix OS images, Linux images. Almost any image you want, it's on this website, like people who have created the images. Like the image I used with my board was this exact image. It was created on April 8th. If I wanted, there's a newer image from June 30. But yeah, I would definitely note this website if you do decide to get a Pine64. This is a pretty good website to get some new images that are not on the official pages. So yeah, that's a look at uh, the online support and forums for the Pine64. Okay, so let's go over the initial upfront cost for the Raspberry Pi 3. I got these prices all from Micro Center and uh, they do not include tax, shipping, vendor difference or anything like that. So let's get started. The Raspberry Pi 3 board is $35. The authorized and official Raspberry Pi Foundation power adapter which supplies the right amount of power is $11.99 and the SD card that I use for almost all my Raspberry Pis is $12.99. So that brings our grand total to start with the Raspberry Pi 3 at $59.98. So this is the uh, Pine A64 diagram for cost. So as you can see I selected the A64 plus 1 gigabyte to be similar to the Raspberry Pi. In terms of RAM and other specs. So the board has uh, a price of $19. I got these prices directly from the Pine64 website except for the SD card. I got that from Micro Center. So the uh, Wi-Fi adapter for the board is $10.99 and the international power adapter for the Pine A64 which supplies the current amount of power is $8.99. And like before the SD card is $12.99. And so the grand total to purchase a Pine uh, 64 A64 Plus to start off with is $51.91. To conclude, I think uh, both boards put up a good fight. Uh, both are equal competitors. I think the Raspberry Pi 3, in terms of its operating system, still needs a bit of refinement so it can take full power of the 64-bit processor. But other than that, both boards put up a great fight. If you're a beginner and you don't know where to start, I would start off with the Raspberry Pi 3. There's a lot more guides, much more information than you get with the Pine A64 currently. So if you're a beginner, go with the Raspberry Pi 3. If you're looking for a new challenge, I would highly suggest the Pine A64. Depending on the operating system you install, it could be a whole new experience compared to the Raspbian on the Raspberry Pi, and it's really a fun experience. But in terms of costs, both boards put up almost the same cost. I think it's just a matter of time till we start seeing discounts on the Raspberry Pi 3. I believe even Micro Center ran the Raspberry Pi 3 for $29, which cuts down the price even more. And if you cut corners on the adapters and SD cards, you might get a little bit of a lower quality 
uh, product but uh, it will still work and you can use it for whatever project you like so yeah uh, thanks for watching uh, if you guys have any um, suggestions please let me know in the comments and in my next showdown I'll be sure to do that thank you Thank you.